Okay, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do exposure blending, taking these three images to make this image and blending them all together using masks. Okay, so the whole principle behind doing exposure blending is you've got a set of bracketed images. So usually you start off with a base shot that you've kind of get as perfect as you possibly can as a single exposure. And then you'll either do a one stop over and under or a two stop over and under. And the whole purpose of those extra images is to complement your base shot. So your overexposed shot's gonna be starting to add information into shadow areas and your underexposed shot is to add information into highlighted areas that are being blown out in your base image. So the whole concept behind it's really quite simple. You're just basically using masks to hide and reveal certain elements in the different layers into the bottom layer to create that one perfect shot. So let's jump into Photoshop and I'll show you exactly how to do it. So here we are in Camera Raw, and it's gonna be the same kind of interface if you were using Lightroom. So this is my base shot. As you can see, the foreground looks really nice, but the sky certainly has some brighter elements in there that really aren't attractive. Got some clipped clouds. So this next shot here, the sky starts to come into play. I've used a polarizer to polarize the sky. So it has that really nice effect, but as you can still see, my highlights here are still problematic. So the next file basically is just about re-adding in that highlight information back into some of those key areas that the first two files didn't have. So I've done my basic raw processing on this. I've just set my white balance to be even between all three images because I don't want to get some funny white balance shift in between the blending. I've opened up my shadows, I've closed down my highlights, I've set my optics to do the chromic aberration and the lens profile corrections. So I'm just gonna select them all, Command A to select all the images. I'm just gonna hit open, to open them up into Photoshop. Okay, so all the three files are here. So to load them all into our layers over here, the easiest way is to come into File, Scripts, Load Files into Stack. Add open files, click OK. It's really nice and simple. So there it goes, they're all in our layers. So what I do now is I just come in, I just delete these files because we don't need them. And they're just gonna take up unnecessary RAM on your computer to have them actually opened in Photoshop. So first things first is basically to set your layers out in the correct order. So basically I like to have my base image as my bottom layer. So it's almost like you're layering up a cake. So the next file that I wanna blend into my base layer is gonna be the second image that we had. This image here where the sky just starts to come in. So this is gonna be where the heavy lifting of our exposure blend is gonna happen. And then the final image is our underexposed shot. And that's just gonna be for the highlight information. So we're gonna be using a very small portion of this image as part of our blend. So I just turn that layer off and you just work with one layer at a time and turn all the rest off. So to blend this image into this image, it's pretty quite simple. You just come down, go into your channels, command and click on your RGB channel. It's gonna load in a Lights One Luminosity mask, just to have a look. Come in and just apply a mask. So it hasn't done that great a job. So we're just gonna delete that mask. This is the best thing with masks, is if it doesn't work, you just delete it. We're gonna come into our lights and we're gonna try and pick a lights that has a better representation of what we want to blend. So white will reveal, black will conceal. So we're looking that we want to include this part of the sky, which looks really nice. So I think a lights three looks good. I'm going to hit apply. So it hasn't really done it at all, but that's no problem. It's because at the moment, white will reveal, black will conceal. So it's actually hiding that. So we can just invert that now. Command I, and then your sky pops in. So instantly you can see how good a job just adding that one single mask has done. As you can still see up here, we still got our problematic highlights. So what we're gonna do is now we're gonna turn on our top layer and we're gonna find a mask that best represents those highlights. So select a lights four, a lights five. I think a lights five is probably too restrictive. I'm gonna try a lights four just gives us that little bit of 
bit of globalization around the highlight we want to blend in. As you can see, we're going to be pulling in these white peaks here, that peak there, and these peaks here, which are problematic in our file. So, okay, so what we're going to do with that mask, we're going to come in and hit apply. So it loads it onto this layer. So if I turn that layer on and off, you can see how it's come in here. But the problem is though, is that it kind of looks weird, a little bit crunchy, it's just not great. So if you look at our mask, what we could do is we could come in and paint with our brush and try paint out that sort of crunchy look. But there's a better way to do it. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to click on this layer. I'm going to come in and click on the mask layer again. And we're going to come up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And we're actually going to blur the mask. So if you look now, you can see, if I preview it, you can see how that crunchiness is gone. So if I just click up here, you'll be able to see the difference between the mask, the mask before and the mask after. So just come in and play around with your radius and just find the happy medium where you just start to lose that crunchiness in the sky. So just preview on and off. So once you're happy with it, click OK. But there's one, there's one issue that this can cause. So if you come down here and have a look, I'll zoom right in if you and you can just see that it's just causing a little bit of a fog outside of the cloud, which is kind of not what we want. But because we're working on a mask, it's nice and easy. B for our brush tool. I'm going to come in at 40%. So you can sort of see how it's just a little bit too blurred. And we're just going to come in and just paint that out. And don't worry too much. Like if you come in and you paint through, the worst thing you're going to do is just brighten up the cloud a little bit. So that's no problem at all. You're just going to come in and just remove those sort of elements that you don't want in that shot. Come through and just basically check the masking. So I don't really see any sort of funny fringing through here. Just come in and give it a little bit of a clean up if you need to. Zoom back out and you can sort of see the difference your mask has made. So it looks really quite nice through the tonal range. So if I hold down my option key, click on the eyeball before, after, just by using those two luminosity masks. And that's what exposure blending is all about. Just applying masks, masking something in, masking something out. If you make the wrong mask and you don't see much of a selection at all, it's no problem. Just go Command I and just see if it actually changes and does exactly what you want to do. And if it doesn't really do what you're after, all it means is that your mask just isn't strong enough to bring that layer through to the layer that you actually want it to be applied to. So then just come in and select a deeper mask or a lighter mask or come in and select a dark mask. Select your dark mask, apply it to your layer, if it doesn't work, invert it, doesn't work, just bin it and then just start again. And that's the beauty of working with masks, as I said before. If they're not working or if you've totally stuffed it up, just come in, delete the mask and then just restart on that layer and just find a way to work and make it be applied to the image how you want. As you saw before, just come in, it looks really crunchy. You could paint it out, but then you're gonna be brighten up, brightening up the cloud kind of defeating the whole purpose of using a mask on it in the first place. So just come in and, and basically blur it. So there's heaps of ways that you can just work and manipulate your mask to try and get what you want out of your images. So yeah, so that's basically it guys. That's how easy it is to do an exposure blend with your exposure bracketed images. And the thing is, is that if we had another three layers on top, you will just do the same process again, go back up, select that layer and then look that at what you want it to be applied to your image and then mask it in, mask it out accordingly. Once that's done, then go to your next layer and apply that. Then go to your next layer and apply that. 
So I hope that was really beneficial to you. If you got a lot out of the tutorial, it'd be great if you could give us a like, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment below, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.